playing the first Nobunaga no Yabo video game to grace the Mega Drive system. Let me let me show you what we're dealing with here. We're gonna be we're gonna be talking about not really this game, but the dude on the cover mainly. Uh, of course, as I was mentioning, if you're interested in who actually made this game, we're co we're, we're talking about Koi, of course. Company uh, founded and still standing by um, Ko Shibusawa, which is the alias for Yoichi Rikawa right here. Is his personal logo, and his wife, possibly the most uh, successful woman in in old video game history, um, Keiko Rikawa. Uh, I talked a lot about this for for, for the for the for the Arabis lore stream. So if you wanna if you wanna check that out, just Google Godi underscore Arabis in a second time. Today we're just gonna talk about Nobunaga. Just gonna be Nobunaga the whole time. Just just Nobunaga, 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 Nobunaga. All right. So this is the game that came up in the, in the in the next in the Mega Marathon, right? It's a Koei game, classic strategy game on the vein of uh, Sangokshi. It's gonna be it's gonna be really good. Uh, oh, he is holding a. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna be talking about what Nobunaga is holding on the box or I just never noticed. I mean, I always seen it. I never realized the fact that there was a fucking Nobunaga holding a. This game is gonna be incredible because it's gonna. Oh, okay. I'm gonna pick Nobunaga, by the way. <clears throat> okay, so the release of this video game happened on December the 20th, 1991, on the Mega Drive, that is, at the extremely large retail price of 11,800 yen. Uh, by like today's conversion rate, that's like a uh, like hundred dollars. It's, it's a lot of money. A Soundware inclusive version too, which I have no idea what that is, by the way, Soundware uh, was also simultaneously offered for 14,200 yen, which is a lot. Now, uh, the first, the first Nobunaga no Yabo video game came out in 1983 for the FM7 computer and it was such a big hit that the company, Koei, moved their headquarters in order to focus on software development. Now, the second game in the franchise, simply titled Nobunaga's Ambition, which is a translation of Nobuna Nobunaga no Yabo, by the way. Yabo means ambition. This came out in 1986. Oddly enough, this also released on the Mega Drive and even got a Genesis port. So it came out in English, but in 93 in Japan and in 94 in the state. So, like, this is... It's an earlier Nobunaga no Yabo game, but on the Mega Drive it came later. So this is the, the, um, the second in the series, but we're playing the fourth. Because the fourth Nobunaga game is the first that came out on the Mega Drive. That's how we're doing things. We're playing them in order of release. All the series on the Mega Drive from now on, playing on order of release on the Mega Drive though. Then in 1988, uh, Nobunaga's Ambition 2 came out. With an even uh, secret box art, in case you thought that was just not possible, it was. Now, all of these video games, of course, were popular enough to be ported to a million of other systems, thanks to Koi having already long established the genre, and even, having even popularized it with the Sangokshi titles, which is Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Sangokshi. Uh, of course, if if you if you look at if you look at like the earliest uh, Koi Shibusawa games, the earliest Koi games, absolutely earliest games, you 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 can tell you can tell that, that oh yeah, so this is what would have led to freaking Songokshi and the, all those Koi strategy uh, titles because that dude that dude always had the freaking um, passion for that kind of genre of video games that it basically uh, created, you could say. <clears throat> and they have such a good respect, such a lot of... Uh, it's so awesome. Just one dude starts making video games like 40 years ago on his computer. <clears throat> Sorry, to this day, the company is still like a big... Mm, that's so awesome. I'm actually dying. So let me, let me drink water. All right. <laughs> Now, after that, keeping the almost perfect two-year cadence up, a Busha Furoku released on the PC-88 first, Busha Furoku being um, this game. 
our game. So this released first on the PC-88 in December 1990, then on a variety of other systems. It came on the FM Towns in July 91, on the MSX in 91, on the 21st of December 91 uh, for the NES. Finally it came to the PC-98, 15th of March, uh, March 91. It came to the Sharp X68000 in August 91. Then in, in February 93, it came for the PC Engine CD on the Super Famicom, Super Nintendo, on the October 94. Uh, it came on the PlayStation 1, February 99. And then it even came on the Wii, the Super Famicom version. The Super Nintendo version came out on December 2, 2008 for the Wii, of course. <clears throat> yeah, the packaging is glorious, isn't it? Yeah, I, I gotta agree with science right there. Yeah, the interviews with the co, uh, co yeah, those interviews all rule. They're all good if you want to waste a few hours on YouTube, of, especially those about the Nobunaga. I mean, I watched some interviews about the the MMO that he made in the two thousands about the Nobunaga's ambition. Got an MMO later on. I'm not gonna talk about later Nobunaga games. Maybe one of the other Nobunaga lores. This is gonna be a Nobunaga lore and. And T lore, but you already know that if you look at the bottom of the layout. Anyway, this was the fourth game in the series. <clears throat> and it was the last to be supported on old computers. This thrust into the future of technology is even reflected in the video game. As technology, culture, and tea ceremony mechanics were implemented. Technology, you can like freaking build plated ships in this game. They were known as uh, Atakebune. Like they would, they would be like plated with freaking full copper plates or whatnot. Like this game's supposed to have some really extreme shit in it, like tea ceremony, gathering tea ingredients, uh, building plated uh, ships, uh, buying the guns. And because it's Koei, I fully expect to get there, not have the possibility to do that right on. I expect to. This game's gonna have two scenarios. I mean, this, this, I'm just. Freakishly uh, excited to play this video game now. Now, the, the culture and tea ceremony elements uh, are like quality additions to the series. They were not in the series before that and are very much in line with what Nobunaga achieved over the course of his uh, dominion, dominance, domain, whatever you want to say, uh, government. Now, the two playable scenarios. The two playable scenarios are the beginning of the Civil War in uh, 1555 and then Nobunaga surrounded by his enemies in 1571. We did both scenarios in Erebus. I had no reason not to, even though you get the ending and the credits over the, at the end of the first one. So I, I, find, I, I find it hard to believe that I'm just going to do one uh, scenario here, especially since now I know what happened those years. I, I documented myself. Also, I kind of studied this, this shit back at the university as I was studying Japanese. So, uh, this, that, I, got, I, got, I got extremely excited just to do this research. A lot. I'm going to pick Nobunaga for both uh, scenarios. I'm just going to pick Nobunaga. Okay, so the, the video game title, uh, Nobunaga no Yabo Bunsho Furoku, translates to something like Nobunaga's Ambition. Record of generals in turbulent times. This game's supposed to have like 200 generals with all different portraits, something like that. The game has, however, also been localized as Nobunaga's ambition, Lord of Darkness. <laughs> but was Oda Nobunaga really just an evil lord? We'll see, we'll see. Brace, brace for Nobunaga shock. Now, Oda Nobunaga was a Japanese daimyo, which is a feudal uh, lord. Daimyo, just daimyo, it's the word. It's gonna be a lot of Japanese words. Doesn't mean it's a weeb stream, right? Uh, it was it was a Japanese daimyo of the of the o o Owari province. He led various military campaigns to which he conquered a large part of Japan, as we will see. Like half the provinces were his. Shogunate shock, and uh, not really though, as we will see. Nobunaga never got the title of shogun. Spoilers. Trap. But thank you so much for the 20 months. Now, <laughs> this is a very Italian portrait 
of Nobunaga. I mean, if you're Italian, you're re now that I told you, like, oh yeah, that did look familiar, because there's a lot of old freaking Italian photos and portraits that look like this. It's a very Italian portrait by the Jesuit Italian uh, Giovanni Niccolo, which was Nobunaga's contemporary, right? This might be the most faithful uh, image of Nobunaga is, 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 is Italian. You, you found it here first. Nobunaga is Italian. Uh, so uh, Oda Nobunaga of the clan Oda, <clears throat> he was born in uh, 1535, 1535. So the date of the first scenario, would be, it would be 21, right? Yes, yeah, so that's pretty good. In, in Nagoya. Now, he was the legitimate successor to his father, Oda Nobuhide. But as a young man, he was too compulsive and reacted badly enough to the death of his father that his mentor committed seppuku. Now, mainly for those reasons, it was hard for him at first to gain allies, but eventually he established himself in the Kiyosu castle, where he would stay for 10 years, bonding alliances with the Imagawa and the Kira clans. So Imagawa clan and Kira clan, first, first allies. All right. <clears throat> Now, in 1555, reminder, this is when the first video game scenario starts, right? 1555. The daimyo Nobunaga led his armies in the Mino province, attempting to aid Saito Dosan, which is this dude. Here's a future picture of him for reference. Now, he went here to, to, to try and, 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 and help this dude. Whose, whose daughter he, he had married in 1549. So Nobunaga was married to the daughter of, of this dude. So he went there and tried to help him because he was at war with his son, Yoshitatsu. So, you got, you got Dozen Saito is a war with uh, freaking the son of his, right? <clears throat> Now, this, this, this guy here, the son, was object of rumors that suspected him of being an illegitimate child. So he was afraid of being disowned, is what the deal was, and why he was wagering war against his father. Too bad, though, that uh, Nobunaga's campaign was a failure, because Yoshitatsu defeated, killed, and replaced his father, Dosen, in 1556, before Nobunaga could do anything about it. Now, after only a few months, he was challenged for the control of the Oda clan, Nobunaga that is, by his brother uh, Nobuyuki, who had always been the alternative to those who never considered Nobunaga as a good fit for a daimyo. Now, after defeating his brother, so Nobunaga defeated uh, Nobuyuki and his allies in the Ino battle, <clears throat> Nobunaga issued a pardon thanks to his mother and Nobuyuki himself. That wasn't enough to regain trust in his brother, though, as in 1555, Nobunaga lured his brother Nobuyuki in the Kyosu castle, feigning an illness, and killed him. Which is pretty, pretty extreme. Now, by 1559, Nobunaga had eliminated all internal clan opposition and could claim to be the lord of Owari. <clears throat> He kept signing alliances with other daimyos through his kanre, which is a word for deputy, through his kanre for his, for his dude Shiba Yoshikane, which he was allied to by the star. Remember when I told uh, he allied himself with two clans? Shiba Yoshikane was <clears throat> one of those two, clan Shiba. <coughs> Fuck. <laughs> so he, he's, he had been doing that, like signing alliances left and right through this dude. But this guy. But he found, he found out that um, Shiba Yoshikane here was, was actually conspiring on Nobunaga's back <clears throat> and was dealing with the Kira and Imagawa clans to attack the Oda clan and return the Owari province's control to the Shiba clan. So Nobunaga cast him away and made void the previous deals, declaring, declaring war instead. So bad his teacher killed himself. <laughs> hey, Malone. All right. Now, Nobunaga would gain uh, fame throughout the whole 
country, country of Japan when in 1560, in 1560, <clears throat> excuse me, he stopped Imagawa Yoshimoto here and his very large army on his march to Kyoto. There's a picture of uh, Imagawa Yoshimoto in uh, Neo too. <laughs> I like that it strikes the same pose as the uh, as the artwork there from the olden times. Now that was around thirty thousand men stopped by maybe a thousand or two on the Oda side, on the Nobunaga side, who took advantage of a sudden storm and launched a surprise attack on the Imagawa camp, killing Yoshimoto that you see in these pictures. Now, notably, the next year, Matsudaira Motoyasu of the Matsudaira clan, which was vassal, vassal to the now hurt Imagawa clan, signed an alliance with Nobunaga. So the dude that got wrecked had an, had an ally that signed an alliance with Nobunaga. Now, you might, not, you might not be familiar with the name Motoyasu Matsudaira, but it was the guy that then became uh, Tokugawa Ieyasu. Which I feel is a name known even by simple weebs. And here is a glorious picture of him. Then Nobunaga's attention was again focused on the Mino province, where his whole campaign failed. Remember when he went to aid that dude who was at war with his son, but that campaign was a failure? He went back to the same province because for six years it would be politically and militarily involved against the Saito clan, whose lord. Yoshitatsu had now died to an illness. Remember the son that killed his father and took his place? That was Yoshitatsu. He died. So we're talking about, about this guy, right? So this guy died after killing his father. Short after, he died of an illness in 1561 and was succeeded by his young and inexpert son, Tatsuaki. There you go. Young and inexpert, Tatsuaki. <clears throat> so he was very much not well seen by his supporters. So Nobunaga, over the years, got many of those to defect. And then finally launched his attack to the Saito clan in 1567. I expect this stuff all to be in the game, you know. <laughs> all of this is going to be in the game, guys. Make no mistake. So you better fucking pay attention. So he launched his attack to the Saito clan here in 1567, conquering the Inabayama castle. Oh, look at that. Look at that. And exiling the young, the young inexpert Saito lord. Is, an, is a picture of the siege of the Inabayama castle. Florislava impaling himself. <laughs> All right. The Nobunaga test, dude. You can take the Bachelor test for this game. Alright. So, where were we? So, Nobunaga conquered the, uh, the castle of Inabayama, right? <clears throat> this is an important, important time, because he then renamed the castle Inabayama into Castle Gifu. This is Castle Gifu. They renamed it like that, inspired by the legendary Mount Gi, or Qi in Chinese. Mount Gi is said to have been the place where the Zhou dynasty's conquest of China started. Probably pronounce that uh, Zhou, like Z-H-O-U. Notably, Oda had a sigil forged that said Tenka Fubu after that conquest. There you have it. This is one of the most famous Nobunaga fact, facts. After you, Nobunaga Yakitori shop opening in Australia, Tenka Fubu, one military insignia under the sky. You can you can you can translate this into a million ways, but it's 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 about uniting Japan, and and it's like literally you might be inclined to think through force, but not quite. This was this was also like on its banners. It had a sigil made like this. This was like, uh, this was Nobunaga, Nobunaga's motto, basically. This was great. This was all the rage back then. 
so in 1568, Ashikaga Yoshiaki, dead Shogun Yoshiteru's brother, so the Shogun died, this, this is the brother, came to the Gifu castle to ask Nobunaga for help in dealing with the Shadow Shogun Yoshihide. Put there by the Miyoshi clan. So what happened is Shogun died, some clan take control to control the Miyoshi clan. They put a they put a puppet shogun in there. So the legitimate brother of the dead shogun goes to Nobunaga and asks for help. Right? Nobunaga accepts. Nobunaga accepts. Why does he accept? He's intending to finally have a shogun legitimate his military campaigns. All right. He would have had also control over the capital, the Kyoto, the Kyoto capital. Nobunaga launched a preemptive attack immediately in the south of the Omi province, along the road to Kyoto. The Rokaku clan was opposing Yoshiaki there, the, the brother, the picture you saw, and was preparing for war. But the Oda daimyo, Lord Nobunaga, could surprise them thanks to the help of the clan Azai, to whom Nobunaga had given his sister Oichi <clears throat> in marriage to Azai Nagamasa. We got some more dank dudes, bitches here. Mm. <laughs> They're all in the same pose. So, because because he had given his sister to this dude, he's his sister, by the way. He was basically, you know, all political, right? So, thanks to this guy's help, he could launch his price attacks over that side of the world as well. That is how Nobunaga conquered all of the Rokaku castles. All of them. Now, with the road to the capital, Kyoto, now completely clear, he quickly marched on, on the capital and easily imposed himself onto the unprepared Miyoshi clan, making Yoshiaki, uh, this guy, a shogun. I got some uh, future pictures of them. You got to show. So that guy became the shogun. He offered Nobunaga the title of Kanrei, which is like a deputy, but Nobunaga refused. Nobunaga always refused all the titles they offered him. He didn't give a shit, he just wanted uh, the actual power. The actual power, and it, and, it, and it showed. It shows, because with time, the manipulative intentions of Nobunaga became clear. Now, to make use of this new shogun's power, thanks to his military force, that was, that was all Nobunaga wanted. Right? We've said that before, it showed. And what happened in consequence to that, that Yoshiagi started gathering clans against Nobunaga. Fights ensued, and the Oda clan sustained heavy losses, but still prevailed against the Azai and Asakura clans in the Battle of Anegawa, together with Tokugawa and Ieyasu. So this is where, this is where you start talking about the Oda dash slash Tokugawa faction, if I'm not getting it mixed up too much. Oh yeah, this is uh, Tokugawa Yasu. Now, in 1571, which is the year of the video game's second scenario, which is called Nobunaga is Surrounded by Enemies, Nobunaga started what is perhaps one of his fiercest military campaigns as he attacked. He attacked the Tendai and Ryakuji school, uh, the, a Buddhist... Buddhist monastery on Mount Hiei. Now this was famous. These were training uh, this 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 schools, this monasteries, this complex was training monk warriors. And being as they were really close to his residence in the capital, they constitute a grave danger. They were completely obliterated. Between twenty or thirty thousand men, women and children were killed. And the monastery was completely burnt down. Here is a picture of just that. After that, he attacked the main Nagashima fortress. Now, Nagashima was like a fucking complex of fortresses with like a shitload of monk quarters and whatnot. There was just fortresses over the, the mountains and whatnot. He attacked the main one, the cathedral fortress in Nagashima. Of the samurai opposing Ikoiki monks. Right? So we're talking about leagues of monk warriors and commoners, all trying to oppose the samurai class. 
Now, this, this cathedral fortress named Honganji was considered impenetrable due to its structure, orientation, and positioning. Also, a hundred monks were on patrol at any time, and up to 10,000 could be called to fight with just a ring of a fucking bell. Now, Nobunaga sustained heavy losses, including two brothers of his. In 1580, in 1580, he eventually conquered the fortress and the whole complex was set on fire. Killing tens of thousands of people. That was only after the longest siege in Japanese history. We're talking about 11 years here. Talking about a siege that lasted 11 years, guys. Now, according to some sources, the fire was set from the inside. The fire was set from the inside just to prevent Nobunaga any material gains. Like they pulled out the dude to surrender and then they... That was it. That was it. <clears throat> exactly, Malone. You make a very good comment there. Yeah, those were warriors, yes. Those were monk warriors. But uh, a lot of them were just commoners or farmers and stuff like that, you know? Hmm. Okay, excuse me. There we go. Now, what happened on that site? Toyotomi Hideyoshi would build the Osaka castle on that site three years later. That would be 1583. This is a modern picture. You can see skyscrapers behind the Osaka castle. Now, in the meantime, here's a picture of Toyotomi Hideyoshi. We will not miss any pictures during the course of this stream. In the meantime, as the Takeda clan, Takeda, Takeda clan, very important clan. Takeda clan had adhered and adhered, I don't know how to pronounce that shit, hold on. It's the same in Italian too. <laughs> it's the same freaking word, just an H. Adhere. Adhere. You gotta say with a smug British pronunciation though. So, the Takeda clan joined an alliance against Nobunaga. And, and Takeda Shingen, here is, and here is an action figure of him. Believe it or not, that's not a man, that's an action figure. Takeda Shingen, under the shogun's pressure, marched towards Kyoto. A Kyoto was, was, was not defended because we're talking during the siege that lasted 11 years, okay? So, Nobunaga only sent a few reinforcements towards Ieyasu, who was defeated in the Battle of Mitagahara. Uh, Mikatagahara, sorry. Of which I'm going to show you a picture. Look at that. How good is that? Now, thankfully for the Oda Tokugawa faction, uh, Shingen Takeda died in 1573, so he just freaking died before he could get to Kyoto. It was maybe like a stomach issue, maybe maybe a heart issue, but his his health condition had been deteriorating for quite some time by then. So the Takeda clan retreated. It's it's particular, isn't it? Like you would think by today's mentality that if something like that happens, you just keep going. If your leader dies, you just, just dismantle. I don't know, man. At that point, though, Yoshiaki, so we're talking about the the shogun, the shogun that became a shogun thanks to Nobunaga, kept being uh, manipulated the whole time. Doing a recap for you, and 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 um and then kind of uh kind of did a riot and and just freaking coerced other clans into joining battle versus Nobunaga. Right at that point, he had gone too far. Like it was an open battle. So after the battle of Mitaga, uh, Mikaragahara, <clears throat> Yoshiagi just was forced to face Nobunaga with his very small forces. He was defeated and exiled, and thus the Ashikaga shogunate ended. Now, that same year, the Azai and Asakura clans were also defeated. 
Azai Nagamasa sent back Nobunaga's sister, Oichi, and committed seppuku. I just like, okay, well, take back your sister. I'm gonna stab myself in the belly. Now, Takeda Katsuyori. What happened next? Regards this beautiful. <laughs> I just gotta look at that picture. It's too funny. Freaking fast. <laughs> Takeda Katsuyori was uh, Takeda Shingen's hair. Was defeated in the, the the most infamous, perhaps, battle of Japanese history, the Battle of Nagashino, 1575. Where the over 30,000 men of the Oda Tokugawa faction slaughtered the most feared cavalry, the Takeda cavalry, thanks to the, to the Portuguese arquebus. Freaking uh, arquebuja. The gun, you know, the arquebus. They used guns. You can see that in the picture. All those rays, those are supposed to be bullets. I'm sure you saw at least a couple movies about that, you all. Now, what's interesting is that was the first major battle fought with guns in Japanese history, and they were particularly slow to reload. So, three lines, three lines were formed. As one line fired, the next one covered the reloading time. The fierce Takeda cavalry was taken down before they could even get into melee fighting range. Hey, <laughs> Jiggy. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, man. Now, this is my favorite part, guys. If this guy is somehow into the game, this game is instantly the best video game ever made. This is, this is my favorite part, so pay attention. Pay attention to the streamer's favorite part. There was one particular hero. One particular hero of the battle for the Nagashino castle. Talking about Tori Sunemon. During the siege of the Nagashino castle, Tori Sunemon, known for his bravery, known for his bravery and knowledge of the surroundings. Of course, he was inside the Nagashino castle, so it was the defending faction. Right? <clears throat> he volunteered to escape the castle and infiltrate past the siege lines. In order to warn Tokugawa Ieyasu, who was in Okazaki. I want you to realize that I'm showing you pictures of each of the hero's events. So here is escaping the castle. And here is fucking infiltrating past the siege line. Look at that. Look how look. I wanna be like him. Hey, look at that shit. <laughs> it's a freaking Anyway, he went, he went away to warn Tokugawa Ieyasu, right? He successfully warned him. So he actually did it. He warned him in order to, to, for them to break out of that defending position in the siege. But he got captured. He got captured on his way back to Nagashino. He got captured. What happened then, he was told to shout at his companions up in the fortress, and he could see them, 500 of them, looking out, down on him. It was, told them, it was told to shout at them that, that they should surrender, because no help was coming, even though we know that he had successfully warned Tokugawa Ieyasu. He instead told them to keep fighting a bit longer, because help was on the way. It is said it is said that he was crucified either before or after the proclamation that he might have been killed by a spear to the stomach after saying that but long story short he was told to tell his companions that no help was coming and they should surrender instead what they did after doing all of that and given the chance very stupidly for you ask me to warn them he did and uh, for that, or before that, we don't know that, he was crucified like this. This is the absolute 
hero. Of all this lore, there's no better character than this. <laughs> there's no better character in Japanese history than this. This is the best. I wouldn't call this out of shape. Who said that? Say it out of shape. DF, please. I, I, I don't care how many six packs you got. You never look that awesome, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> you gotta redefine your concepts of, of shape there. Now, his family... His family was promoted from Ashigaru class to Samurai class. And his family served the Okudaira family until the end of the Edo period. Now, a Takeda retainer, Ochiai Michihisa, even used an image of crucified Tori Sudemon on his flag, which is what you're seeing on screen right now. Somebody made this story, this dude, into their flag. Very pregnant video game, Tyson is the dude. Cannot not agree with that. Hey, Pico. <laughs> Which anime is that? Oh, shit. Fucking anime. How many animes you guys watch that had Nobunaga? I don't watch a lot, but recently I watched Drifters. I had it. Pretty good. I, it, it, that's not all. That's not all. In 1923, a railway station, which opened near the death site of his, was named Tori Station. Is this Tori Station? All right, aside, aside the, the glorious hero story. Aside the glorious hero story, Nobunaga kept expanding. Nobunaga kept expanding, everyone. Kept expanding and dislocating his generals among the provinces. Now, in 1578, 1578, his new residence was completed. New residence completed from this castle's name. This castle's name derived the name of the period that goes between the Ashikaga Shogunate and Nobunaga's death. So between the, the Ashikaga Shogunate's fall and Nobunaga's death is the Azuchi period. So we're talking about the Azuchi castle. Say Yashi. Hey Bilbo. It's still plenty for you, Bilbo. We're barely halfway through. <laughs> you just missed the best part though. That was the best part about Tori Sunemon, dude. I want to be that good, dude. Just, I want to get that good in life later on. <clears throat> now, he is a reproduction of that castle. Because as uh, you're about to learn, it got destroyed. <laughs> now, the man perhaps to pose the hardest challenge to Nobunaga is Uesugi Kenshin this guy and this is a figure <laughs> of him <laughs> now Uesugi Kenshin uh, also joined a second anti-Nobunaga alliance and battled Nobunaga at Tedorigawa achieving a decisive victory which allowed him to prepare to march towards Kyoto so Nobunaga was defeated at Tedorigawa by Kenshin Wesugi. By this man you see on screen. However, however, his health was fucked up already and it, it, he died. So I'm sure you heard that before. <laughs> Leaving Nobunaga as the undiscussed force and authority throughout Japan again. So that was pretty lucky. Now, the other daimyo, Nobunaga took the chance to. Um, Completely eliminated the Takeda clan in 1582 with the Temokuzan battle. Where Takeda Katsuyori, his wife and son, all committed seppuku, which is depicted in, in this picture. You can see them um, killing themselves. Finally, finally, guys, in 1582. In 1582, while reinforcing his general, Hashiba Hideyoshi, Nobunaga was betrayed by Akechi Mitsuhide. Famous for just that, although he was one of the strongest generals of Nobunaga. 
Nobunaga was betrayed by Akechi Mitsuhide, with whom he departed to go and reinforce the other general. By the way, little side note, it was it is said that that general didn't actually need his support. It was more like uh, it was customary to do that, not to gain all the credit for a conquest. It was like attacking in a siege situation. There are other speculations, but nothing uh, malicious. At least not as far as much as malicious as uh, Kechi Mitsuhide's betrayal. Now, while they were reaching that other general, they, 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 they took a little break. They stopped at the Kyoto Honoji Temple. There, Nobunaga, feeling safe, was only being escorted by a few men. In a coop, Mitsuhide surrounded the temple into which Nobunaga was forced to retreat after a short fight. Here's the image of what is referred to as the Honoji incident. This was all extremely sudden. This, was, this, this, this had no, no apparent reason to be. To this day, they speculate as to why uh, Mitsuhide Kechi just betrayed Nobunaga. Could be because he wanted to rule Japan. Could be because he had a personal grudge. But it just came out of the blue. It is said that Nobunaga's last words were run, don't let them in. And that his attendee, Ranmaru Mori, hence run, don't let them in, referring to Ran, Ranmaru, this guy. Ramaru Mori then set the temple on fire so that nobody could claim Nobunaga's head. They told his most trusted men by his side to burn the temple down so that nobody could claim his head. Nobunaga's rests were never found. Here we have Nobunaga on the right, guys. You have Ramaru Mori on the left. Nobunaga's rests were never found. There were uh, Moris. Ramaru became a rever um, re revered, revered. Only one way to know. Revered. Revered. <laughs> Freaking British ass pronunciation. Ramaru became an extremely revered um, characters in in literature. Especially in literature at the time, and then the media, well, because of his loyalty. The two had an, ex an extremely strong relationship, according to the literature of the time, even sexual, which was very common. Um, also, I believe in like uh, video games, anime, and whatnot. Ramaru Mori is like extremely um, feminine looking. Hey, Sask Saska, good to see you. Now, the fact that Nobunaga's remains were never found is a big speculation topic for both writers and historians. And so is the reason for Akechi's betrayal and coup. At any rate, Akechi tried succeeding Nobunaga in power, but was not supported. Instead, he was killed by Toyotomi Hideyoshi here. In a battle of Yamazaki, just 11 days after Nobunaga's death. Like he betrayed Nobunaga and then immediately got destroyed. 11 days later he got killed. Anyway, we told the story of Nobunaga, guys. We told the story of Nobunaga. Did you enjoy it? It would be too easy, however, to tell the story of Nobunaga's government by only mentioning war, politics, betrayals, seppuku, and sieges. We're going to be talking about um, some of the civilian stuff, it is, some of the cultural improvements it brought. We're going to be talking briefly about Rakuichi Rakuza. Now, this is one of the Nobunaga institutions worth pointing out. This is a, de a, a declaration of free markets, and it was a plan for economic development by basically forbidding trade monopolies and providing for open guilds instead, which were the Rakuza. So it broke open the unions, guilds, and associations that he considered an obstacle to commerce, developing laws with an eye to tax evasion, 
and depth regulation. So that was good. Another thing it did was the the register registers of land holding basically would ask for these uh sashidashi. It brought about the sashidashi collection pictured as a random picture of a fish market during those times. Now the sashidashi collection was the main method used by Nobunaga to implement his farming communities policy. It was through the issuance of cadastral regulations on the basis of the information contained in the collected sashidashi that Nobunaga could achieve the collapse of the Shoen system. Of course, you don't know what that is, but that doesn't matter. Severe punishment would await those who refused to deliver the sashidashi, such as the Makinoji temple priests that got absolutely destroyed. They mobilized, they tried to mobilize against, the, against that, against Nobunaga, with about 800 persons from the villages around them, and they all got slaughtered. The temple was burned to the ground, not even its valuable sutras were spared. Basically, Nobunaga instituted a flourishing economy by literally suppressing economic power. Under Nobunaga, under Nobunaga, Kabuki also started to develop, although it would more substantially do so during the Edo period. The daimyo, Nobunaga, our favorite daimyo, was also interested in European culture. He collected European uh, or Western uh, artworks, weapons, and armors. This is a this is a real armor of Nobunaga. You can see the you can see the banners. There you go. You see that yellow band that was. No, the Oda clan's uh, war banner that was Nobunaga's banner and that circle with those kanji you see in it that is uh, um, his his motto we were talking about earlier um, already forgot its name Tenkafubu Tenkafubu one military insignia under the sky All right. Ah. He, he is the tomb. He is the tomb. He is the tomb. He had big, big interest in Western culture. Was one of the first Japanese to wear European clothes. And uh, although not religious, he supported the Jesuits in Japan. J Jesuits? I don't know how to pronounce it. As a political move, I guess the Buddhist monks that he was always fighting. It was under his government that, on the 15th of August, 1576, his, the first Christian church was built in Japan. Nobunaga had about 23 between sons and daughters. He knew how to get somebody pregnant. Interestingly, the one that lived the most was the only illegitimate child that we know of, Oda Nobumasa. Oda Nobumasa lived an astounding amount of about 93 years. From 1554 to 1647. Jesuits? That's what, that's what T does to you guys. You can live 93 years if you follow the upcoming T, uh, T tutorial. <clears throat> now with, with the riches. With the riches Nobunaga had gathered. Nobunaga was just supporting the whole time. Many art forms. And had marvelous castles and gardens built. Is a, the, the Azuchi Castle we mentioned on the Biwa Lake, for example, was covered with gold and just filled with uh, famous artists of the time, Kano Etoku. Just a lot of wall and ceiling paintings like that. And uh, here is a map of what was Nobunaga's conquest. Take a look together. So. You see that, that, that little where Sekigahara is, that uh, purple one at the center, the small area? That is the land of the Oda clan. And then the gray one, the big giant gray area, is, is the area conquered by Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi by 1582, which is when Nobunaga died. The orange ones are the main oppositions and the land of those damias that were opposing Nobunaga in 1582. 
the the brownish beige ones are just other areas. Now that was the Nobunaga shot. Now coming up next, we're gonna talk about T. He is very important, guys. He is very relevant to this video game too. He actually it's advertised. It's a new feature in the series. Hey, Dream Baskets, yeah. Now, uh, on the late period, the late period, you need more water. On the late period of Nobunaga it was about the time when his tea ceremony master, that's right, he had a tea ceremony master here. Which we will know as Rikyu, Sen no Rikyu. This guy established the channel U rules, basically the way of tea, like uh, the tea ceremony rules. The tea ceremony that Nobunaga made popular and used to discuss business and politics through it. Nobunaga was pretty artistic. And as I said, it's an important component, innovation element in the Nobunaga no Yabo series. And I personally have taken part in 2013 in a tea ceremony when it was in Tokyo. So that'd be my pleasure to, to look into it further for you guys and uh, show you in this segment something about that related to Nobunaga, of course. Now, Rikyu here, as mentioned, was the main influence on the tea ceremony. After Nobunaga's death, he became very close, next, with Toyotomi Hideyoshi, of course. Who gave him his honorific, uh, honorific Buddhist name of uh, Rikyu Koji. Just simply Rikyu. <clears throat> he did that to allow him to enter the imperial palace where Hideyoshi was offering a tea gathering for the Emperor Ogimachi, so he needed this tea master to be there to do that. So you had to give him a honorific Buddha, Buddha, Buddha name. Now the two went a long way together, but were often in conflict. On one hand, the merchant class tea master's uh, conservative view on life and politics. On the other, the turbulent and expensive one of Toyotomi Hideyoshi. I still had a passion though for arts, and the tea ceremony especially, they just did not agree on anything, not even on the tea ceremony itself. The conflicts were crucial, and they span across many topics, like Hideyoshi's will to conquer Korea. Obviously, we're talking about a, not just a tea master, right? We're talking about an influencer, talking about a dude close to the leader, so we're talking about a guy with political power, okay? Now, Hideyoshi wanted to conquer Korea, which made a lot of sense. To satisfy the impossible to satisfy samurai class. Just ran out of lands. They had no more lands to assign. Of course, uh, Rikyu, the tea master, did not agree with that. Or again, Hideyoshi wanted to turn tea ceremonies into massive court gatherings, massive events. Whereas the tea master, Rikyu, was working on stuff like this two tatami rooms. Two tatami rooms for more humble gatherings. Hey, I left empty. Have a good one. Now, eventually, as their personalities were too big and Riku had gained some political relevance at this point, uh, Hideyoshi ordered him to commit seppuku, perhaps hoping he would concede, which he didn't. And instead, that he held one last exquisite ceremony to And then left all the participants souvenirs of all the instruments used that he carefully presented. All the instruments except for the bowl, which is shattered. It destroyed the bowl, saying that no man shall ever use again this cup polluted by the lips of misfortune. Famously so, was also it was also a poet. Now the guests departed with one staying behind to witness Riku's death which happened after his last words, written down in poem, as it was customary. He didn't just uh, 
Take Your Life with Seppuku, you also wrote a freaking death poem. He committed seppuku at the age of 70. What did he leave to the tea ceremony? Now, what he left to the tea ceremony is tradition in particular are the humble concepts that you saw maybe in the intro video. I should, I should play that as I, as, I, as I talk, as we talk about tea. We talk about tea. Let's, let's have this running. Let's, let's put it here. Now this this person's you see here, like not being served tea, but like the, 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 the woman in the blue kimono. It's safe to say she's been doing this for like 40 years. Like that that stuff gets uh, brought down to generations. It's it's absurd. Everything is extremely calculated. Every movement with your hands with the items on the ground, they, even the way you're supposed to drink it, it's it's absurd. Like you, you take the the, the the you take like the um, uh, the teacup, the big bowl, pretend this is a bowl and this is the top of it. You take the bowl and then you don't just drink it. You have to put one hand below it, one around it. Then after you drink it, you have to turn it around like clockwise. And then maybe you pass it on after having a second sip, right? I think, I think this woman drinking here is a noob because I don't see her turning the cup. Maybe the next woman will, 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 st will stay tuned for that. But anyway, huge element of Japanese culture, the tea ceremony made popular by Nobunaga and then refined by Rikyu, his, his tea master. <clears throat> now, what was left by him to the tradition were the humble concepts of directness of approach, rustic simplicity, and honesty of self. See, she's turning the ball kind of. I know why she's looking at it. She's, I don't know. And then she bows, and then she passes on, bow. Other woman bows as well. In time, the preparation goes on. Yeah, this turned into ASMR now. Yeah, we're just looking at this now. It's, it's happening. Oh, she did cheeky. <laughs> now, three head houses of the way of tea directly descend from Rikyu, the tea master you saw. You have Omota Senke, Ura Senke, and Musakoji Senke. The three houses all carrying the same teachings. Now, during his late years, he started devising and using extremely small and rustic rooms for the tea ceremonies. They're known as. I just serving tea to the next uh, guests. Could you, could you, thank you. Get silenced, Japanese women. Oh, she's drinking the tea though. Oh, see that? She turned it. See, I'm not making shit up. You have to turn it like that. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, see, the, the other girl's turning it too. Before serving it. But then she sticks the thumb in. Shit. Anyway, uh, one of these small rooms called Soan, literally meaning grass hermitage, became a national treasure. One of these small rooms became a freaking national treasure. So Rikyu preferred the rustic, preferred like rustic Japanese made items. He collaborated with like artisans to try and get the rustic simplicity of the feeling he successfully uh, left us with a CT ceremony. 
So you prefer those instead of the more uh, trendy, expensive and fashionable Chinese items. This and other aspects combined with the wabi-sabi philosophy, which is like find beauty in simple things, which he did not invent, but he sure made popular. Look how she's cleaning the little spoon with a, with a like a dedicated uh, tissue that then she carefully, yeah, look at that. Look at the carefulness. He's got like that skill, 100%. Okay, okay, I gotta stop being enthralled by that shit. So that's how uh, So An Cha, or more commonly referred to as uh, Wabi Cha, tea ceremony. Yep. Rustic tea ceremony was born. That's uh, that's my tea shock, you guys. You feel like you want tea now? That's done too now. Hope you enjoyed that. That leads us to the best part. See how this ends. She's still folding stuff, but... Because <laughs> even like putting stuff back in its place is part of the ceremony. She's putting stuff away, and that's part of the ceremony. The best, the best freaking tea ceremony meme is the Ranma one. If any of you read or have read Ranma, but it was like one episode of the manga one chapter that was sick it was a t ah, yeah, okay i see by googling it that it's also on uh, on the anime yeah freaking uh tea ceremony battles they use tea ceremony instruments to fight and and she has to walk and uh while kneeling she cannot stand up of course we're talking about female rama but anyway that okay i almost brought up anime mom almost weep almost weep Anyway, let's get to the to the sound shot. Get to the to the music of Nobunaga no Yibo, Busho Kunraku. Okay, so sound shot. It's the first video game on the Mega Drive to utilize the early Koei sound driver referred to as Koei Type 1. First Koei sound engine on the Sega Mega Drive. Bring up chat. No. This is gonna be on the Bachelor test. But this game, if you wish to take it, the whip test is, is a surprise. I have never watched Rama Trap. Get absolutely fucked. I grew up with the manga, dude. <laughs> If you haven't read Ranma, dude, it's not about being a Weber now, it's about being a, a good person. <laughs> Madoka, no dude, no dude. Fucking gotta, gotta have read at least one uh, manga by... By... Um, first time in my life, I can't remember her name. By uh, Rumiko Takahashi. Like fucking Urusei Yatsure. Oh, Ranma. No, Bill Bull, that doesn't count. Although Dragon Ball is the first manga I read. Pretty epic. But anyway, let, let me, let, let, don't, don't make me go and uh, don't make me derail. Make me derail. I still gotta play that Mega CD with a Yatsura game, man. Shit, supports the mouse. I have it too, and I have a Mega CD. I still haven't played that shit. All right. So, uh, it's about not being a weeb at all, Roteo. <laughs> That's, you're, you're already being weeb-oriented. I don't know if I'd take the test if I were you. Anyway, we're talking about the sound of this game. The first game to use the Koei Type 1 sound engine, only utilized in three other games. Sangokushi 2, Romance of the Three Kingdoms 2, Daikokai Jidai, which is Uncharted Waters, and Royal Blood which is Gemfire, so that makes a four games total. Now, Yoko Kanno, she is the only person credited for the soundtrack in all three Mega Drive Nobunaga releases. 
He's also credited for the ones in Uncharted Waters and its sequel, and for Taiko Rishiden. It is not known, however, whether she was responsible herself for the engineering and FM sound composition, although there doesn't seem to be any reason not to think that. However, so. She worked at Koei in the late 80s and in, other, uh, in, in the first half of the 90s, so her name comes around a lot as far as their typical Koei video games go. Now, in 2000, there were a couple of CD games that released with her music in it. We're talking about the PlayStation title Tetris with Card Captor Sakura Eternal Heart. One of the two. It is this video game. Take the chance to hit the bathroom, you guys. Get fucked. Get animated. Maybe unmute it. How's the music in this game? Holy shit. We bait. Just got a uh, hundred more viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dead. Yeah, this is very anime, yeah. I'm sorry. It's cropped too, it's badly cropped. Like a, 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 a sick Tetris. This is Tetris. Music's pretty dank, dude. It's got that uh, Iroto Kano Jets vibe. Is there an ending? Extremely cringe video game, guys. Okay, so we finished the game today too. That was one of the two CD games she made music for in uh, 2000. The other one is a Dreamcast title, which is a less wave of a video game, and it's called uh, it's called Nepple Tale, Arcia in Daydream. Holy shit! It's like uh, pretty good cringe material as well. Alright, okay, let's hear other bits. Oh, I just got into an ice stage. Look at that. Yes. What's this game about, even? It's a, an action RPG, by the looks of it. Why? <laughs> She's got a clapping shield. <laughs> what? And a flying dolphin follows her. 
This is a pretty dank video game, guys. I don't know about you. I, 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 I would play this. Especially this music. Look at the minimap. Oh, you can't see that shit, but... Right. That's a weird freaking map. And the video's cropped on my end, too. Alright, so it's got good, good music. It's all about I wanted to hear. It's got a patch. Oh, I didn't know about that. Good. Web streamer detected. Didn't you hear my perfect pronunciation of all the Japanese words that have been said in this lore? There's no way you can call me a web. Web. Now, in 2007, though, why did I close NPC? I have I have the dankest video to show you because she, Hiroto Kano, she scored the music for the Java mobile game. Open, not the Scotch. Fuck! I should I could I could I could, I, I, I could get Hoban from the kitchen. <laughs> Oban Star Racers. It's an animated series. A French-Japanese animated series. Oh fuck, that's small. Dude, can you somehow... Enlarge that? Uh, I don't suppose you can do that, so... I'll do it myself. Just lost my, my hearing. There you go. French video game. All of us voting for Madden, dude. Hey, Olimars. This lady makes good music. Indeed, she does. Indeed, she does. Indeed, she does. Uh, that was 2007. Video game Open Star Racers. Le Cycle Daro. I don't know how to read that French. Now, she collaborated again uh, with Koi, at least in 2015 and 2016, with Nobunaga's ambition, Sphere, uh, Sphere of Influence, and Romans of the Three Kingdoms uh, 13. And the rest were just uh, credits she gets for having scored the original tunes. Uh, she scored perhaps most notably the opening, the opening to the Cowboy Bebop anime series. Right, that's uh, her credit in the um, her credit in the, um, in the in the in the opening. See, her name is the one uh, the third line just below tank. It says uh, music composer um, Kanno Yoko. Nowadays, she is part of the Grand Funk Group. There's a link right here. You can find it in the chat on the paste bin and whatnot. And still composes for TV dramas, medias, and such. That was all I got, you guys. That was all I got. That was at least a hour and 20 minutes of lore. And it was all extremely pregnant and fast-paced lore. I hope you enjoyed.